All right, everyone. Hello. My name is Gordon Wilson, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Rain. We are the artificial brain company. Today, I'll be talking about how artificial brains will make AI radically cheaper. So we're going to start by asking the question, why is AI so expensive? And what's funny is a corollary to this, or the same the answer is the same, to another question, which is, why is NVIDIA the first trillion dollar chip company in history? So let's dig in. This is NVIDIA in their spaceship campus in Santa Clara, you know, built with uh, the sales of many, many millions of GPUs. Um, and we asked the question, how did NVIDIA become so valuable today? And how would they become the defining infrastructure behind artificial intelligence? So in uh, the GPU was first brought to market in 1999. Uh, NVIDIA was founded about six years prior by Jensen Wong and another and his co-founders, and they intended to build a card for graphics processing for video games and movies. The GPU can first came to market in 1999, but there's a, the combination of this technology. The GPU alone did not make uh, NVIDIA into the AI company of today. It needed another ingredient. And that was an AI training algorithm called backpropagation, which many of you, I'm sure, are aware of. Backpropagation was first uh, conceived and popularized in 1984 by Jeff Hinton. But it was the integration of these in 2012 with the AlexNet event that, act, that really spurred the dawn of deep learning. Neural networks had existed for some time before this. Backpropagation had existed well before 2012. But in 2012, AlexNet was the first neural network that actually used multiple GPUs strung together to build a bigger neural network than ever before. And that neural network beat the ImageNet benchmark for computer vision by a whopping 11%. Since then, since 2012, this combination of technologies has enabled the golden age of artificial intelligence we're witnessing today. Every major breakthrough that we have witnessed has been built on this integration of backpropagation as a training algorithm and GPUs as the hardware substrate. Whether it's AlphaFold, which predicts the structure of proteins, or generative models like Dolly 2 that produce this adorable image of uh, teddy bears with transistor radios underwater, or, of course, ChatGPT, which has made massive waves this year, all of these neural networks were trained with backpropagation and run on GPUs. All of these have the same infrastructure behind them, the same recipe of algorithm and hardware. But training a single model can cost tens of millions of dollars. For those who are AI practitioners, I'm sure you're intimately aware of these high costs. ChatGPT and generative AI are booming, but the costs are extraordinary. Uh, the largest models can be extraordinarily expensive on the order of tens of millions of dollars, and deployment with inference can cost even more, hundreds of millions of dollars. But it's not just the data center where you're limited. This limits everything from the hyperscale data center all the way to the edge and prevents us from putting true intelligence into autonomous machines. Today, the cruise cars that are driving all around my city of San Francisco have mini data centers in every single one of those vehicles. And they're about two orders of magnitude away from actually becoming an economical taxi service. It's the cost of artificial intelligence that's preventing those autonomous vehicles from being viable as a business. The GPU was built for graphics, not artificial intelligence. So this is the GPU that I bought when I was 14 years old in 2005. Went to Best Buy, asked my mom to pay for it, and installed it into the PCIe slot in the back of my computer. This GPU I used to run Age of Empires. This was the best hardware for the video games at the time. This was the, the way NVIDIA was making money. And until this, the, this last quarter, uh, uh, GPUs for graphics were the cash cow for NVIDIA. It wasn't until this last quarter where, they, where their data center revenues exceeded their gaming revenues that they actually became a trillion dollar company. But the GPUs that they sell today look pretty similar to the GPUs from 2005 and the ones they released in 1999. They run matrix multiplication. They have scaled down with Moore's Law, they have more transistors, you know, they have more cores, you know, the most cutting edge H100 GPU today has maybe 6,000 cores relative to maybe 
a few hundred from 2005, but fundamentally, this is the same computing architecture that is scaling down with Moore's law to get more and more compute. It's matrix multiplication is this math. And it just so happened that the math underneath graphics rendering, matrix multiplication, was the same math under training and inference of neural networks. NVIDIA did not set out to become the AI company. NVIDIA got lucky. So how are brains different from the GPUs that run today's artificial intelligence? A lot of ways. First, brains learn. Now, one can say that artificial neural networks do learn today. They take a huge amount of data, a huge amount of power, and a huge amount of time. So brains learn, but importantly, brains learn efficiently. Our brain has 86 billion neurons, half a quadrillion synapses, and runs with 20 watts of power and is about a five inch cube in volume. It is the most scaled up and efficient computer in the known universe. And it's the, it was the inspiration for the entire field of artificial intelligence. And when we look at the history of, an ev of evolution and the history of evolution of the brain, brains are very similar in their scale and efficiency. The bumblebee brain with a million neurons, a dog brain with 500 million neurons, more complex processing, more emotional processing, uh, more, mo more multimodal sensory uh, ability to connect. And of course, the human brain with 86 billion neurons, the largest brain that we know of. Um, the elephant brain does have quite a few uh, neurons as well, but mostly for pure sensory processing across its skin. So back to RAIN. What are we here to do? Our research mission is to build a brain. Our business mission is to make artificial intelligence radically cheaper by building brain-like machines. This is not the first time people have set out to build hardware that looked like the brain. Alan Turing, the godfather of artificial intelligence and the field of computing, the person for whom the Turing Prize is named, he set out to mimic the brain in its structure and function when he began his work. John von Neumann, who we can credit for the von Neumann architecture that is the foundation of all CPUs and GPUs today, also was inspired by the brain. In fact, his unfinished dying work was a book called The Computer and the Brain, where he was trying to explain to the world how though his architecture was very powerful and was taking off, it had not yet come close to the brain in very important ways. Today's AI infrastructure is not like the brain. So today you really have two choices with AI infrastructure. You have data centers of GPUs from NVIDIA, where you can run training and inference. And you also have some lower power chips from companies like Qualcomm that can deploy inference to low power devices like your cell phone. Of course, companies like Apple are building their own ASICs um, and there's a new development of low power devices there. But fundamentally, you have these two options, a huge data center where you can actually do training or low power chips where you can deploy a little bit of inference. You can either have learning or you can have efficiency but you can't learn efficiently. You can either have training in a data center or you can have inference in low power. But this is not like the brain. Today's hardware and algorithms are not brain-like. So let's go back to those two. The GPU, it's a von Neumann machine. What does that mean? Von Neumann built his hardware, his architecture, based on the fundamental separation of memory and processing into, into separate functional units. This is the, defi the, the fundamental uh, definition of the von Neumann architecture. Separate into memory and processing, but the problem is that in neural networks, synapses are both memory and processing units. They both remember their weight, which can be adjusted, and they modify the signal from one neuron to the next. They are fundamentally non-von Neumann elements. This means when you run your GP, when you, when you run a neural network on GPUs, over 90% of the cost is due to data movement. Moving data back and forth from your memory and your processing units. Of course, the GPU with more parallel cores is better at this than a CPU, but far, far away from the brain. 
And backpropagation is also not like the brain. The world of neuroscientists have loved to critique backpropagation despite its, growing, its, its massive popularity in AI because it uses something called a global learning rule. For, uh, to update every single weight of your neural network, you need to zoom out and look at the entire neural network, differentiate across the entire system. This is extraordinarily expensive. And there's no homunculus in, the, in our brains looking at the entire brain and differentiating against it to update every one of our synapses. All of our synapses somehow can update themselves with what's called local information. So the hardware is not like the brain, the algorithm is not like the brain, and both of these contribute to extraordinary costs. Tomorrow's AI needs new hardware and new algorithms that more closely resemble the brain in structure and function. This is our mission, uh, this is our work at RAIN. So we need a new type of scalable hardware and a new type of training algorithm. That is called compute in memory hardware. If you're familiar with the hardware world, you may have heard of this, but fundamentally compute in memory hardware is about integrating the memory units where you store the weights of your neural network with the compute units where you process them. You can build this with digital or analog technologies. We have studied extensively both of these in the six years of our company's existence. But it's not enough to just have compute and memory hardware. And there are a lot of companies out there that are, that are taking training on GPUs and data centers and deploying on inference on compute and memory hardware that's low power. But we need a new training algorithm if we're really going to move the whole stack of AI and build an artificial brain. And that means biologically plausible algorithms with local learning rules. One of them was conceived by Jeff Hinton, the forward forward algorithm. If you, if you followed his, uh, his talk in his paper, you'd, you'd see that there was one company he referenced in hardware, and that was us. We are the only company in the world integrating both training and inference into low power compute in memory hardware. This is a trillion dollar problem, integrating training and inference into one platform. On July 10th, just a few weeks ago, Mark Andreessen said, you want it to learn about people in real time and you want the neural network itself to be getting retrained on the fly. This would be a trillion dollar company. Artificial brains are low power platforms for integrated training and inference. We are building artificial brains. We're solving this grand challenge of AI with the luminaries of our field. In 2020, we worked with uh, Yashua Bengio, where we showed that end-to-end -end analog chips for AI computation were possible. Um, it, it, oops, slipping my words. But we, after we worked with Yashua Bengio, we then worked with Stanley Williams. Stanley Williams is credited with uh, fabricating the first memristors in 2008, and he is the hardware expert. We connected that to algorithms and demonstrated the first ever training gradient-based training on memristor hardware in history in Nature Electronics this last November. And of course, I should also mention Jeff Hinton in his, his recent work came up with a forward-forward algorithm, which we're currently working to de develop into our first product um, and has referred to us multiple times there. Our first product will be a watershed moment for low power AI. The most extraordinary computer vision in one watt. One watt, 140 tops, five by five millimeters, sub millisecond inference latency, and online learning for adaptation and personalization. No chip like this has ever been brought to market because no one has ever integrated compute and memory with training. This is 140X efficiency gains over NVIDIA or in GPU, their low power platform. The only low power chip for both training and inference. This will support face, gesture, and object recognition, video super resolution, SLAM, and is ideal for drones, robotics, mobile phones, personal computers, and more. Coming Q4 2024. In 2025, we will take our substrate that we have developed and we'll scale it up to support a pay to op of compute in a 10 watt package. This will scale out to support a range of boards and systems using chiplet integration, given its low power footprint, to support large language models and multimodal AI. Compare this to NVIDIA, NH100 has about one pay to op and 800 watts uh, of power, one chip on one board, will support one pay to op with 10 watts 
one chip, one board. And because of our low power, we can exploit emerging chiplet integration technologies and have a 10 pay to op board still with one eighth of the power of an NVIDIA H100 GPU, an ADX improvement over today's H100. So I'd like to highlight one of our partner or marquee partnerships. We've partnered with Argonne National Lab to bring artificial brains to their particle accelerator. In their particle accelerators, they have x-rays, which require on-device data movement or on-device data processing. We have studied and worked with them and will be publishing a paper in a few months on how our hardware will improve their systems by over 100x. But of course, this is where we're just beginning. Oops. We're focused on building full solutions for our first customers. We're now seeking further partnerships. You bring the problem, we bring the brain. Artificial brains will power the most important AI applications of the future. Personal AI needs artificial brains. If we want our devices to get to know us and keep our data private and secure, we need to have training embedded in those machines. Today, our data isn't our own. It's transmitted across networks and consolidated in data centers owned by massive corporations. The only way to have a device get to know you and only you and to know that it's secure is if you can have training embedded in that machine at low power. Remote AI needs artificial brains. If we're going to explore the Mariana Trench and the far reaches of our universe, we want to build smart systems that, that can operate independently and don't need to communicate with the data center back on Earth. We need to have training and inference in low power to explore this and understand our world. And safety critical AI needs artificial brains. The world is ever changing. The environment around us is not static. And for something like autonomous vehicles, we could train on hundreds of thousands of hours or millions of hours to enable autonomous vehicles in a small area. But if we want true autonomy, that it can actually be safe, it needs to adapt. It needs to be able to learn from a changing environment and a changing self. Safety critical AI needs artificial brains. We're backed by world leaders in artificial intelligence. We're the only AI infrastructure company that has had a funding round led by Sam Altman. And we raised our Series A in January of last year. We have a longstanding partnership with OpenAI as well. Uh, you know, we're a block away from them in San Francisco for a reason. And our roadmap for artificial brains will deliver efficient learning at any scale and at even greater efficiencies. We have studied the frontier of hardware and algorithms. We have worked with the godfathers of artificial intelligence. We're backed by the leaders in artificial intelligence. And our roadmap will start with 100x gains, but will go much, much further than that. We will evolve our hardware and compute and memory from digital to analog. We will scale in three dimensions, mimicking the sparsity patterns of the brain, and ultimately by exploiting low power, analog, and advanced algorithms, algorithms like something called fast target propagation, which could turn any neural network for deep learning, any training problem from requiring 10,000 examples to a handful of examples using something called second order gradient descent. These are the components of our frontier roadmap, the IP that guides us towards our North Star. North Star being to build fully scaled up artificial brains that match and exceed the efficiency and capability of ourselves. Our North Star product will ultimately achieve over 1 million X gains over today's GPUs. Today's best AI is stuck in the cloud but rain will bring it down to earth to devices all around us. Thank you.